Hi everyone, it's Miss Kearney. I'm here at home and I am about to film my first lab for you, my first virtual lab. And I'm gonna be answering a question that a lot of my students ask every year, and that's, are we gonna be dissecting something this year? So that's what this lab is about. In this lab, we are gonna be dissecting, ready? Daffodils, we are gonna dissect a flower and this is a perfect time to do it because as you know it's now spring and we often see bees come out this time of year and we all know we're very concerned about the bees and how important they are in pollination so through this lab you're going to be able to identify different flower parts and realize how insects are important in the act of pollination and fertilization of flowers the materials you're going to need for this lab you're going to need a pair of scissors or a plastic knife, and you are going to need a flower uh, like the daffodils I have here. So if you need a daffodil and are able to walk out to the school garden, there are plenty of daffodils at the school garden. I also have some in front of my house. Uh, if your neighbor has any in their garden, maybe you could give them a call and ask if you could snag one of their daffodils for this lab. Otherwise, you can just watch the video and follow along with me. Okay, everyone, hopefully you have acquired a daffodil by now or some other big, pretty flower. So this daffodil has a lot of parts that we can see without even dissecting it. We can see the petals. This flower has six petals. And we see this crown right here, which is often a different color in a daffodil. And you can ask yourself why that might be a different color. This piece is called the corona. It's kind of funny. And then you'll see some pieces a little closer. You see one piece that sticks up farther than the rest. This piece here. And then you see some other sort of stem-like pieces that go around that piece that sticks up. And we'll start talking about names for those in just a minute. Before you start cutting your flower apart, it's a good idea to sketch your flower. And Mix Alvarez has put together a really amazing tutorial on how to sketch a daffodil. So that's something that you could do before we get started if you wanted to pause the video and do a nice sketch of your daffodil with Mix Alvarez's instruction. Uh, it's important that we're able to sketch living things because before the mid 1800s, there was no way for us to take photographs of these specimens. So um, drawing things in nature has always been a practice that scientists use. Okay. Okay, hopefully you got a chance to get your diagram drawn. And now we're gonna start talking about the parts that you see. So beyond the petals and the corona, Flowering plants have reproductive parts, just like all flowering plants, animals, and people. And the male reproductive part is called the stamen. You see parts of the stamen here with the pollen. So pollen is actually the male reproductive cell. The stamen is the filament, and on top you see the anthers here. The piece that sticks out the farthest here, this is called the stigma, and you probably can't feel it, but it's just slightly sticky. And it's stemming off from something called the style. And that is the female reproductive part of the flower, also called the pistil. So I'm gonna take my scissors now, and I'm going to just gently cut down the corona even probably tear it with my fingers because it's so delicate. And a lot of pollen is falling off. Okay. All right, and you can set that aside. Let's see what we have here. So, these are the reproductive organs of the flower. 
Again, the male reproductive part is called the stamen, and it consists of this long filament here with the pollen-filled anther at the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick those off, or snip those off, and see how many there are. I've got one. Two. Three. Four. Five and six. So when a bee or other insect comes to gather some pollen to take it back to the hive, that's going to be a food source for bees. Um, it provides protein to the bees in the hive. It can't help but touching the top part of this female reproductive organ here, and this is again called the stigma. So pollen is going to get on top of there and what's going to happen is that pollen travels through the style all the way down into here. And this is called the ovary. Just like in people, this is called the ovary. And what do you think is going to be inside the ovary? Well, if you said eggs, then you're absolutely right. I'm going to take my scissors, and my scissors actually come apart. And I am just going to... Give a little slice down here. Of my ovary. See what's inside. And you can see eggs. Those are called ovules. And those are the female reproductive cells of this flower. I can see some popping out there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and slice up my style here. Split it in half. And what happens during pollination is pollen gets on the tip of the female reproductive organ, the stigma, and it travels down the style into the ovary. And when pollen meets these little ovules here, that's called fertilization. And each one of these tiny little eggs can become fertilized and become a seed. And if that happens, then we can have more daffodils. Now the process in daffodils, uh, the seeds take a long time to mature and grow into new daffodils. So we actually usually buy daffodils as bulbs and plant them in the ground. But you can see here the different parts of a daffodil. And I hope you enjoyed dissecting in our virtual lab today.